So thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve all of you. Mancha Kalpatarupyas Chakripa Sindhu Pyaeva Chapatitanam Pavani Pyo Paishnavi Pyo Namo Namaha. So mm, I know that this verse has been broadcasted, talked about a lot of times. But I think <clears throat> if you ask me personally, as a disciple of Srila 108, Om Vishnupad, Paramahansa, Ashuta, Tashara, Srimad, Anandras, Babaji Maharaj, mm, this is maybe the most important verse, most important verse, when it comes to Manjari Bhav, when it comes to understanding Manjari Bhav. There are several verses who are like, you know, when you make a house, you need a foundation. And when you have Manjari Bhav as a tattva, you need a lot of foundation, you need a good foundation so that you are convinced so that you can develop Ishtanishta, like Gurudev is saying, to develop Ishtanishta in the lotus feet of Swamini. We should read Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi and to develop Nishta in our chosen path of Manjari Bhav Sadhana. We should study Vilapakusa Manjali. So in this Nishta, that this is our chosen path and that this is the highest gift Mahaprabhu came to give, that this is Ujjvala Rasa Svabhakti Shriyam. It was never given before, Anar Pita Chiram Jyad. So there are several verses, like the Bhagavatam has a very important verse in the middle, you know, this beautiful, important verse. So for Manjari Bhav, you have several verses which make it very clear um, where the Acharyas, where our Goswamis, make it very clear what Manjari Bhav is and why it is the highest gift of Mahaprabhu. So there is one beautiful verse in uh, Bracha Vilasa's Tava. And now today I want to read verse 16 of Vilapakusa Manjali. Because Srila Raghunatha Goswami, he is called our Prayochan Acharya. He is the one who shows us the goal. Prayochan means the highest goal. <laughs> so Prema definitely is the highest goal. And according to your bath, in your respective Ras, everyone has to understand that prema, pure love of God and his concert, mostly Srimati Radhika, is the highest goal. Mm. It is the highest goal a jiva can achieve, prema. And Srila Raghunatha Swami Pad, he is the Prayochan Acharya, he is the one who shows us, like a captain on a ship who shows us where we have to go, and he says, this is the goal. He is the teacher. Acharya means teacher by example. And of course, he is teaching by his own example. What is the real goal for those whose behalf is longed for in Manjari Bhav? So we all here are sitting together, aspiring to become a Manjari Bhav. Sadak, one who is practicing Manjari Bhav Sadhana. And we are very fortunate that we can do this. It's not that one rasa is better than the other. Each rasa is the best for the one who is in that ras. But as followers of Sriman Mahaprabhu and as followers of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Charyas, we are practicing Manjari Bhav Sadhana. And this verse number 16 is such a beautiful verse and Baba's explanation is so deep, long and beautiful 
so that everyone can develop their nishta. Nishta means strong faith in this wonderful, wonderful way of worshipping the supreme couple, especially Swamini. So I have here the version I send in uh, Radha Dasyam because my good friend Advaita Ji, he is always trying to improve his translation. He always asks me how to do it better and how to do it nicer, grammar and stuff. So the last one was from 2021. It is the edition where he put the beautiful introduction, beautiful foreword in it. So I send it on Radha Dasim and I will read that verse from exactly that edition. It is the newest one. And he told me it may be his final one. So we can all be thankful to our good friend Advaiti, Advaita that he sat down and so over so many decades he translated this very wonderful literature literatures we have to say thousands and thousands of pages he translated without any computer <laughs> you have to imagine that no people <laughs> no no super artificial in artificial intelligence translation like today no he sat down and wrote everything with pen and paper and then when it became clear that the personal computers will be there, he got a very old machine and he started typing with Windows 98, I remember. <laughs> so that is wonderful. We are in such a great position and I feel honored that he considered me as his heir and he, he gave me all his translations for my, for the Baba's use. And it's not for my use. I, don't have to be so arrogant. It's for all of us. He never gave it away to anyone. And he considered me really, I'm so touched by that. As his heir, he has no son. At least not, uh, yeah, you, you know what I mean, to give it away to someone. So he gave it to me and I gave it to everyone. And we will continue to improve it and publish it as much and as often as possible. So therefore, I always want to give a big thank you to Advaiti, because without him, we would not be here reading these extremely wonderful books. That is a fact. So this beautiful verse, and please stop me if I talk too much, if I ramble, 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 you tell me and stop. If you want to share something, please interrupt me. Knai is there, Uddhava is there. I love your new, I like your new blog very much, Udavji. I love you quoted Baba's very, very wonderful verse. Without Bhav, there is no Ras. Without Ras, there is no Bhav. So <laughs> without both, nothing will work. So very beautiful. So I'm glad you're here also to help me yeah. go deep into this wonderful, wonderful verse. Okay. Padabjo Padabjayos Tavavina Varadasyam Meva Nanyat Kadapi Samaya Kila Deviya Che. Sakyaya te mamo namostu namostu nityam. Eternally I will forever give obeisance. Sakyaya te mamo namostu namostu nityam dasyaya te mama rasostu rasostu satyam. So Srila Raghunath Aspaswami is hammering this verse into our heart that we will never forget it. <coughs> oh Goddess. I shall never pray to you for anything else but the excellent service of your lotus feet. I offer my constant obeisances to the idea of becoming your friend. But I really relish the idea of becoming your maidservant. So we can stop here shortly because uh, Raghunath does 
Goswami part, he put in this verse alone so many points. We can, we, we don't, you know, there is so much in this, so deep. So we will go slowly by slowly. And if we need two classes, we take two. But we go slowly. So Baba sometimes says, Oh Goddess. So we can ask, why is he saying, Oh Goddess? <laughs> Are we now praying to Lakshmi? Are we praying now to the majestic aspects of the female aspect? No. Here, Srila Raghunadas Goswami is hinting that in the midst of all the Maturya, of all the sweetness there is in Vrindavan and in Manjari Bhav and in Raganuka Bhakti, we should always be conscious that there is also Aishvarya. But it is like that. It is just a little bit in the ocean of Madhurya. So the sweetness is so overwhelming that this little aspect is like a huge ocean is going over a very small island. But it is very important to understand that the worship of Swamini is not just a mental, emotional, oh, I love you, you know, this kind of thing, because there is tattva also there. Because what is the what is Raghunathas Goswami saying here? Oh, Goddess means that there is Radhika is the origin of all goddesses and all Shakti aspects. Krishna is Shakti man, and Swamini is Shakti. So all the female personalities, Lakshmi, all the goddesses in Dwaraka. Durga, all the exp uh, expansions of Srimati Radharani. So she is the fountainhead even of our own spiritual form. We are also tiny, tiny expansions of her most beautiful form. Each manjari is a personification of an aspect of her beauty. Rati Manjari is the personification of the attraction. Rasa Manjari is the personification of all Rasa. Vilasa Manjari is the aspect and the personification of all that is playful. So therefore, Srila Raghunath Goswami here is saying Goddess, so that we understand it's not just an emotional worship of some, you know, concocted idea of a deity. He's not in the Bhagavatam, someone may say. She's not in the Bhagavatam, you know, all these, all these things, but she is there. But Shukadev Goswami was not able to pronounce her name, otherwise he would have fainted. So Raghunath Goswami, he wants to advise us here, be careful not to walk on a path of Sahajism, you know, to take everything lightly and easily. So he is remembering us, hey, Swamini is the fountainhead of all there is in the in in terms of um manjari bhav in terms of female expansions she is the personification of ladini shakti so therefore he's saying like that oh goddess i shall never pray to you for anything else but the excellent service of your lotus feet <laughs> so this is the alpha and the omega of Manjari Bhav Sadhana, service to the lotus feet of Swamini. Here in this world, we try to serve the ones who are near and dear to us, to who are in our so-called occupation. I am a teacher, so my, uh, my duty is to serve my pupils. Udova, when he was professor, his duty was to serve his students. The master is always, you know, we always have to serve. But in the material world, it's completely misunderstood. They think they have to serve me. <laughs> this is a big, big difference. Manjari Bhav means I serve them. So here, Raghunath Goswami is giving this. He is not praying 
for anything else. May all the mystic perfections come. Bhakti will kick them away, will show them the door, out you go. He's not interested in anything else but the loving service to the lotus feet of Swamini. So this sentence is so deep. It is not just any devotional service. It is the service in a very, very intimate and very personal way to Srimati Radharani, which was never revealed in such a way before Mahaprabhu appeared. Never. No? There are five girlfriends of Swamini, the one who love Krishna more, the ones who love both equally the same, and the ones who love Swamini more. So those Bhavula Sarati, man, those are the Manjaris who love Swamini more. So Raghunathas Goswami, Rati Manchari, or Tulsi Manchari, his nickname, he is the leader showing us this is what we want, this is our aspect, this is our aspiration. Mm. I have not realized much, but I realized that the service to the Lotus Feet of Swamini should per, should um, durchdringen. It should uh, reach through all our activities in our life. The way to penetrate. We want to penetrate. Say thank you. Thank you. Penetrate. Thank you. And, and Pen mm. pervading. It's more uh, fluid. Yes, I see that um, uh, my yoga Shakti is asking to read a little slower, uh, yes. speak a little slower. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I apologize. So, and, uh, Sarun, no, may I ask some gu uh, one question in this? Um, sure, sure, sure. When I already opened my mic. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Always, always. Um, I Never know from, from Raghavat Machandrika. We have to, um, like, there is written that we have to understand um, who is Krishna, uh, like Maturya and also Aishwarya, to not mistaken the, the, that he is just a sweet boy. Yes. So that is, uh, so also with Swamini, I yes. feel can be the same, no? So yes. we have to understand what is her glories to not mistaken her as a beautiful, just a beautiful girl. We can forget it at some point. If the yeah. love is, is overflowing, then you will automatically forget it, but we cannot mistake it. Otherwise, as you said, it will become Zahajia, right? Yes. Yes. But of course, I, I also apologize using the term Sahajya. It's not correct, you know. Sahajya is actually, when we go in this way, just one second, actually the term Sahajya has been very much misused. Sahajya means natural. So, so if you condemn someone with this term, it's actually offensive. So I, I apologize. I just wanted to say what I wanted to say, like Kanai said now, if we take it, for granted, if you take the pastimes of Radha and Krishna as material pastimes, this danger is always there if we forget that actually they are the supreme personalities of Godhead. So this leads very easily to this understanding. If he can have pleasure with so many ladies in Vrindavan, oh, I also can have like that. So this, this danger, this uh, taking it easy to think that, yeah, okay, I'm, I have so many emotions and I, I put them in the service of Radha and Krishna. We always have to check first if it is in accordance with what the Goswamis and what our teachers say. So Baba is, or therefore Baba is saying this very, very wonderful sentence. Rasa is a very wonderful palace. But this palace of Rasa, of experiencing the mellows of pure love is built on the foundation of tattva. So we have to know a little tattva. So therefore, here Raghunathas Goswami uses this oak goddess that we know who she really is. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
And then he says, I don't, I never pray to you for anything else but the excellent service of your lotus feet. So this service to the lotus feet of Swamini, it was never there before Mahaprabhu came. When you read, when I was younger, <laughs> when I was still in ISKCON, I read the poems of Vidyapati, of Chandidas and Jayadev Goswami. So they are all in Sakya Rasa. They have all loved Swamini and loved Krishna, but they never had this access, which we have now by the mercy of Swamini. Their service was not to the personal lotus feet of Swamini. So this is what Mahaprabhu gave to us. We are now in this very exclusive um, shelter of those girlfriends of Swamini who are very, very close with her, so close that even bodily symptoms can appear by the emotion. When, when Radhika is experiencing emotions, like when, uh, you know this first verse, when Rupa Manchari is bitten, it seems she is bitten by a parrot. But actually, those wounds on her lips only come because Radhika was bitten by Krishna. So this verse and this example shows perfectly how close actually the Manjaris are towards Srimadhi Radhika. And this uh, example was not possible in the writings of the great poets, of the great Radha and Krishna poets before Mahaprabhu appeared. So this service to the lotus feet, Raghunath Das Goswami Pad is here aspiring for and praying for nothing else is the highest gift Mahaprabhu came to give. So I offer my constant obeisances to the idea of becoming your friend. But I really relish the idea of becoming your maid servant. So one may say, why? It's, 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 better, it's better to be a friend, no? <laughs> Than to be a servant, no. Now we, Baba will explain why. Hmm. Explanations. The transcendental revelations do not fade away from Sri Raghunath Das. Swamini stands before Tulasi and wants to offer her a friendly relationship, saying, Tulasi, please accept my friendship. You can become equal to Lalita and the others and serve both me and Shyama Sundara. So she's saying, I give you Vishamsneha, Samsneha. Here, take it. Nice cake of Samsneha, eat it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tulasi then says, Oh goddess, I don't want anything else but the excellent service of your lotus feet. I offer my obeisances to your friendship. Let it stay on my head. I only want to serve you. She is refusing the friendship because she knows that Lalita and Vishaka will never have the same opportunity to serve Swamini like the Manchuris have had and will have. They can never come so close. Like Gurudev is always saying, you never let anyone in your sleeping room except for the ones you trust the most. And Radhika feels very embarrassed when Lalita and Vishaka come and she's disheveled, clothes are loose, pearls are unstrung. But the mandaris, their service is to make everything right. Radhika never feels shy before them. That's another verse which is the foundation of Manjari path. When Raghunath is saying, and the mantra is, she never feels shy before the Manjaris, but she feels shy before Lalita and Vishaka. So Tulasi refuses. No, I only want to serve you. No one but Das Goswami is so fixed in that desire for Sri Radha's service. So therefore, Gurudev is chewing the chewing and chewing and chewing all the time. 
the words of Raghunath Das Goswami. Because Baba is saying here, no one is more is so fixed in that desire for Sri Radha's service. He is the one, he is the Tzenit, he is the peak of what can be done in aspirations. That should be our target. Such sincere eagerness cannot be found anywhere else. And why? Because Rupa Goswami said, Bless my dear brother Raghunadas Goswami, and everyone was blessing him. Mm -hmm. Guru. Such sincere eagerness cannot be found anywhere else. Sincere eagerness means that what Kanai said, what is mentioned so many times in Raghavat Machandrika, low pa, eagerness. I'm very eager for material things. But me personally, I'm more eager for material things than for spiritual things, but this has to be changed. We have to change this. Sincere eagerness to go more into bhajan. Hmm? Such sincere eagerness cannot be found anywhere else. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami is an eternally liberated maidservant of Srimati Ratarani. So he is the greatest authority, the Acharya of the Gaudiya Vaishnav Sampradaya. And by following in his footsteps, one will surely attain this service. Wow. <laughs> this is a promise. This is very, very giving, this is giving very much hope. So nice. He is the greatest authority and by following in his footsteps. Therefore, Srila Gurudev is always saying, read Vilapakusa Manjali. Hmm? By following in his footsteps, one will surely attain this service. What does that mean? Following in his footsteps. <laughs> does it mean to... Either only at the end, only drink buttermilk <laughs> and then only eat little bread balls and starve. No, it means to have the consciousness of being dedicated to the lotus feet of Swamini. That is the point. Rai Ramananda did another way. Rai Ramananda was very wealthy, but he was a very, very trusted confidant of, of Mahaprabhu. So, what we what it means to follow in the footsteps of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, it means to be exclusively fixed in our Thai bath, in the one bath that Srila Gurudev gave us. That means follow his footsteps. Without that, we cannot follow him. It's not possible. If we have different desires to fight with Krishna in the armies against Parashurama or to be together with Mother Yashoda and Nanda Bhav and educate Krishna in Vatsalya Bhav or whatever. We cannot follow Raghunath Das Goswami. He will not even take a buttermilk from us. He throws it away. <laughs> he will not drink that buttermilk. So that as a metaphor, you know, so he will not be it will not be possible to follow his footsteps if we deviate from the sthai bath of a manjari. And this is what Gurudev is there for. He is our sole navigator. He is the captain of our ship. Of course, we have to sail the ship ourselves. Our efforts must be there. But we can trust that we have the best captain and the wind for the sails is our sadhana. It's a mercy. It's the mercy which lets us do our sadhana. That is the wind that we can sail with, you know. Our Guru is there so that we can follow the footsteps of Raghunath of Goswami because he himself is doing it and his Gurudev is doing it and his Param Gurudev is doing it and his Par, Par Gurudev is doing it. And down the line comes this wonderful nectar directly into our hearts through his heart, his heart, his heart, his heart, his heart Mahaprabhu. <laughs> Coming down into our hearts. That is the beauty of what is Baba saying here, Sampradaya. Another word is parampara, you know. 
That is the sacred path this Bhaktilata beach enters into our heart. And within that Bhaktilata beach, Gurudev puts the sky bath. And we put on water. Not too much, not too little, right amount. So this is what is it called for, this longing to develop this sky bath, Radik Sneha, to be more leaning towards the lotus feet of Swamini. And you hear, Raghunath Goswami is rejecting Samsneya. He's rejecting, if he's rejecting Samsneya, we don't have to say Vishamsneya. He is not even considering to be attracted more to Krishna when he is rejecting to be equally attracted to both. So he only wants the service to Swamini's lotus feet. That means Radhik Sneha. Clear. <laughs> Very crystal clear. And Baba so nicely gives us this Palashruti, this uh, benediction. Fruit of effort, uh, benediction. One will surely attain this service. He gave the perfect example to the practicing devotees with his sadhana mai jivana, his life that was full of devotional practice. I want to think of myself. As a follower of the Goswamis, like Rupa and Raghunath Das, what can I do to accomplish this? Great question. Hearing, and now comes Baba, and this is the always the hopeful nectar. Hearing and chanting of the Mahavani, the great words of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, will awaken that identification as followers of Rupa and Raghunath. And there we have the secret. Many times when I was in ISKCON in the classes, how can we, how can we, how can we, how can we, how can we? Shravanam Kirtanam. Should Gurudev, Gurudev is always saying this. Hmm? Shravanam Kirtanam, hearing and speaking. This is actually a hearing comes first. Why is hearing coming first? Because without hearing, you cannot understand anything. That is the problem. And if we hear from the right source, meaning from Snikta and Sachati Vaishnavas, it goes directly without any barrier straight into our hearts. There is no, there is no tic tac. <laughs> no, it goes straight into our hearts. Because it is clear. And this is the way how to do this. Hearing and chanting of the Mahavani. Nautam Das Thakur is singing also in his prayers to Gurudev. When he's praying, make your words my heart. Chakutan, what is the word? Ritai Koryo. You know, this song when he's saying, please make your words. Guru Mukha Patma Vakya Koriyo Chitete Aikya Arna Koriyo Mani Asa. Make the words my heart. So we can also see here the Mahavani, the great words of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami will awaken. That identification, which identification? The identification as a Manjari of Swamini. That is that identification. That is actually awakening that identification means Svarupa Avesha. To be Avesh, to be aware that Guru gave us such a wonderful gift. Svarupa Avesha. And how can we realize the Svarupa? By hearing and chanting the Mahavanis, the great words of our beloved Goswamis, Guru, Vaishnavas, you know, from everyone. We can learn from everyone who is in the same mood and who is a loving towards us. Hearing will awaken that, that identification as followers of Rupa and Raghunath. His very powerful words are even greater than the words of the Rishis of yore. <laughs> so, all that Rishis in the Bhagavatam who who spoke for thousands of years and all that things, nothing is as powerful 
His very powerful words are even greater than the words of the rishis of yore. For these words are filled with the lila rasa of the most confidential braja nikunchas. Now comes a very important sentence to which even the great sages did not have access. Baffling. This should blow our mind. All these great sages, like in Radharasa Sudhanidhi has said, Brahma, Shiva, Narada, no access. And we sit here on the Sunday afternoon, access. <laughs> this is really unbelievable, isn't it? So again. Now then. Yes, please, please. Because it's the, you say you say it so nicely. The reason is, as you said, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought us the message that the access is through the feelings and not through the intellectual message. That's what um, Babaji means when he talks about the leader. I spent personally spent a lot of time being confused when people would teach and say, even Gurudev would say, you, you need to understand this and you need to understand that. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's what was happening in ISKCON when you experienced this, uh, this yes. uh, how to, how to, how to. But now I've understood that understanding is understanding with the heart. Mm -hmm. Maybe a better word is realizing, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it's, uh, this is what's, this is the content that's transmitted to us through the parampara. It's this, it's the feeling and that's what the, the old uh, ancient uh, scholars didn't have, like you're saying, that we have this access because of Mahaprabhu came and said, look, it's about devotion, it's not about uh, logics. Yes, very wonderful. Mm. Some of them may have had it. Some of them may have had access also through their emotions. If you read the poems of Vidyapati and Chandidas, they had these emotions, but not in the mood of the Gaudiya, of the Manjaris, not in the mood of what we find here with Prabodhananda Saraswati and why Prabodhananda Saraswati had it, because Mahaprabhu gave it to him. He is a Saki, <laughs> but Mahaprabhu placed it in his heart. And here we have Raghunath Das Goswami speaking, full of emotions. But you said it. Ba Baba always said, one time he said to me, it is not something to be understood. It is something to be realized. And this realizing, this is coming when we are in the process of permanent devotion, when we try to access these feelings. And the Western world and the material world is exactly the opposite of that kind of understanding. Western world and Western philosophy is in understanding with the mind and with the intelligence. We are millions of years, at least, or hundreds of lives, we have this Western samskaras that we have to understand everything with our head with our mind and intelligence but actually Gurdjieff has said it should be transferred down to the heart chakra and it should be understand in the heart that it that is what brought me personally if i may share when i read first time the books of Srila Ananda Das Babaji Maharaj i un i understood <laughs> but not like you said not with my head Something went on in my heart and I knew, uh-oh, this is something really, really special. Really special. So I understood it then with the heart. Before, I was understanding with the mind and thinking with the mind. And then meeting Sadhu Maharaj make it even more clear that this is not the way it goes. It should be going through the heart, like Udavaji very beautifully said. It should be going through our heart. Otherwise, it's not possible. It cannot, it cannot reach. But Baba is saying there's a really, really wonderful, wonderful um, explanation in Madhurya Kadambini. I think even in the first verse, Baba is saying that Bhakti can only enter through the way of the heart, not really, not with any other connection. 
there's a very beautiful, I can post it on Radha Dasham. This is a very beautiful, very beautiful paragraph where Baba is saying, the heart is the receptacle for bhakti. When he is talking about Madhurya Kandambini means the shower, the cloud bank of nectar shower. It's a translation of Madhurya Kadambini, a sweet nectar shower, a cloud bank of sweet nectar shower. And these nectar showers, they cannot enter into our intelligence and not into our mind. It can only enter into the heart. It is never said the Bhakti Lada Beach has to be understood. It is said the Bhakti Lada Beach is given. That is also a very interesting point. It means you don't have to have any qualifications. It is not something to be earned, something to be bought or qualified. It is given to those the Guru sees worthy. And this worthiness is only one thing, <laughs> humility. It has nothing to do with being learned or being super advanced. No, the Bhakti Lada Beach is given, con. The verb in the, in, the, in the Bengali translation of that beautiful verse, after wandering through millions and millions of lifetimes through universes, the sadhaka arrives and guru is giving the bhakti lada beach. Look at it. The verb is con and con means to give. It is not something that is already there, but something which is given. And then it is very clear. This has only the place, the heart. Mm -hmm. So this feelings Radhe, and emotions. Thank you. Sorry yes. for interrupt. No, no, don't apologize. No, I have no good idea to say something, but it is too. It is too schnell for my yoga shakti. Bitte. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Slower, sie, slower. Sie schreit um Hilfe immer. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Danke, okay. Tarun Baba. Du bist so wunderbar. Sorry. 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 Yeah, <laughs> the mode of passion, you know. <laughs> um, yes, slower. Okay. Um, yeah, so this heart, like Udavachi said, we have to receive this, this beautiful gift of Mahaprabhu with our heart. And in America, Srila Gurudev was giving a lecture in 2010 and he said that this container is the heart and the material of that container should be humility. And if the heart is made out of humility, this beautiful gift can enter into the heart and it can stay in the heart. But if this, Gurdjieff said, if this container has holes, it cannot stay inside like water cannot stay in a container with holes. So the holes is our consciousness, which is penetrating this container. Useless thoughts or something like that, apparatus, you know, I don't have to go into that. Everyone knows how to make a hole. <laughs> so, so you know that. So good have said, you have to be careful that this container, which the material is humility, should never be with a hole. And then bhakti can enter nicely into this container. So we continue. I try to read slowly. Hearing and chanting. Rade, of, Rade. Now I have yes. say, uh, a wonderful uh, intention to say um, something. <laughs> it yes. comes in my heart. It comes in my heart. With this, uh, with this, my mind, it's always crazy. And I have learned in the last year does that I uh, be very attend at as a very uh, careful which 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 people I connected this I have learned oh my god when I go to the big family uh, party then uh, after <laughs> very crazy <laughs> And then it's so it's so uh, difficult, and, and it needs many days for clearing now my mind always. And it's a, bit, a little tricky uh, to find out in the last year. Okay, I'll be very at at carefully 
which people I want to connect. It's very difficult for me, but I have also many uh, old friends and other circles. And no, I have no, I'm not so much, I'm uh, not uh, so uh, interested, also interest and in this, and it's a changing in me. Very, very deep in uh, changing now. I'm in the, in the changing process. <laughs> Thank you for, for these inspirations, also with Gurdi, with the Zoom and with all these wonderful things. Yes, thank you, Radha, Radha. But we have to be careful. Um, I agree that the association is very important, but it is also very important not to be too much black and white. So, so I also have a lot of friends a lot of friends from the older times. I have no family except the family of Govinda Priya and my parents died, but I still have a lot of, you can say normal friends if you want to say it. Um, and I like them very much, but it's true. It is not the same as when you associate with Vaishnavas, but you have to be very realistic and you have to be honest and you have to be authentic. So when you associate with people who are not interested in Krishna or Bhakti, you have to protect yourself and you have to be inside very humble and nice and loving and then and not ride their ways, you know, not 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 jump on their bicycle of their values and their um, conceptions, but be a very like good have said, yes, you are right, very humbly. You know what what is the aspiration from those people, which is fine because they had not the mercy yet, but we can give them the mercy alone by our association, not to be arrogant, but alone when when they have our association, when we bring them prasadam and we are there. So I stopped thinking this black and white stuff. So I am in this material world. I need to have contact with people who are not in spiritual life. So this is the challenge everyone has to face. Even family members can be very averse or inimical to bhakti. But this is not something which you should be, you should make a huge thing out of it. In Germany, we say, mach kein Fass auf. You know, you should be very, very cool and calm and just be nice and be loving. You know, Govinda Priya's parents, we usually go to them and we play cards with them. So we serve them in that way because we love them. And this gives them also pleasure. So in that way, we make their life also a, a little bit more happy. Although it is not, <laughs> it is not an item of the sixty-four bhakti items of Rupa Goswami. You know, he's not saying play cards with your in-laws, <laughs> but he says be loving. Ne and he says actually there are only two rules: never forget Krishna and always remember. So whatever you do. Whatever you do, just follow these two rules. And I know the more we associate with those who have not our conception of life, the more we become influenced. But it is upon us to make a wall and make a strong aura around ourselves so not to be influenced by these things. So I had a high school reunion, 35 years of high school. So I went there. And I went back and it was a nice time, but I, re I realized the emotions are still there and you have to accommodate these emotions again and go back and do your bhajan. So this is what Krishna wants from us. Krishna is not telling you to sit in the forest and do nothing. He said to Arjuna, fight. He said not give up all association, sit in the forest and bhajan, try. One week, two weeks, three weeks and then finish. So he said, follow your duty. What is the duty of your life? Follow that. And be always aware, always to remember Radhika and never forget her. Those two things are the guidelines beyond all the 64 items of Bhajan. And if we are honest with ourselves, we know when the mind is deviating. I know that if I have too much, too much association with those who are completely opposite of our scale, I get influenced. So I have to f I have to do more bhajan and come back more. But this will go on as long as I am 
a part of this world. Artificially renouncing your way of life will never lead to anything. I witnessed many people thinking, okay, now I go to Radha Kund, finish. Everything is done. How long it will take? One year, two years, and back they are. And some of them gave up uh, Bhakti Yoga altogether. So it is always better to be very realistic and stop thinking in black and white and try to give them your association by being loving and being nice. And then you also feel very nice. It's not, I'm not, I'm not going there to take association. You know, I don't need this. Every one of us is so much in, in is, you know, it, it, it's fun, of course, to do it, but also it is, you have to give them something. You have to give them their love. And then you get them back also. Not may, Maybe not even through them, but Swamini is giving you love because you serve them. So I see it like that, because otherwise I cannot exist in this material world. I cannot do this without this point of view. Otherwise, we have to go all to Brindavan and finish. But this is not honest. And for me personally, it's not real. I hope I, I speak not out of, you know. So this is, everyone has his adhikar. Everyone has his stage of realization. So as long as you are connected, Baba, my girl was reading the newspaper every day. <laughs> but he was realized. He was not influenced. We should become like the lotus leaf. When we go in the water, the water should not make us wet. That is a good example. Sometimes we get wet, and then we have to try our shirt, and we have to try again our trousers. <laughs> but the more we do it, the more we know what to do and what not to do. So we continue. Thank you for the input. We continue. His powerful words are even greater than the words of the rishis of yore. For these words are filled with the lila rasa of the most confidential brachanikunchas to which even the great sages did not have access. So here Baba is saying that these words are not just words of any Leela, of any Rasa, but the Rasa of the most confidential Bracha Nikunjas. And who is there? <laughs> Radha, Krishna and the Manjaris. And sometimes maybe the Sakis can stand outside and watch and come a little bit maybe near and this and that. But nobody else has access to this most confidential Braja Nikunjas. The Kinkaris know even better how to attain Radharani's food service than Radharani herself. <laughs> how is this possible? Because they are so much one in thoughts and feeling that it is automatically revealed in the hearts of the Manjaris. Radhika doesn't have to say anything, the Manjaris do. Like, you know, in Atlantis, telepathy was standard. It was the standard way of communication. So why, you can think, if Atlantis, they have been so much advanced. In the spiritual world, the eyes can say everything, and it is in the heart. So the communication is going from heart to heart, and the mantras know better than Swamini. Baba is making here the point that they are so close with Radhika that automatically the Seva is revealed. When to fan, when to do anything. This is all in the heart automatically revealed. Hmm. The six Goswamis are all perfect, eternally perfect maidservants from the groves of Braja. Therefore, it is required to follow in their footsteps. 
So, Srila Gurudev is always saying, Srila Asi Bhakti Vedanta Swami, he is a mantra. <laughs> and this is actually all the Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas are manjaris. Be aware of that and we should follow them. Srila Raghunath Swami's love can be understood through this Vilapa, this book. For this reason, we are discussing <coughs> Vilapa Kusumanjali. Srila Raghunath Goswami prays, Ha Devi, please give me the excellent service of your lotus feet. This service is so excellent because it is completely free from shame and reverence and it is very luscious. Nice points. It is free from shame because Radhika never feels shame before the manjaris and it's free from reference because the intimacy between the manjaris and Radhika is so sweet that there is actually no order, there is no borderline in their emotions. The creeper, uh, the, 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 the manjaris, the buds and the flower, they are so close, there is not much difference, no much boundaries in their emotions. So reference is not there. And luscious, of course it is luscious, because it engages all the senses. Such service cannot be found anywhere. But now it is given as a special token of mercy of Sri Gora Sundara. Like Udavji said before, this is the mercy of Mahaprabhu. This confidential Bracha Nikuncha Leelas the entrance and the understanding and even the discussion of them is the great gift of Mahaprabhu. Srila Raghunath Das is a Nitya Sita Kinkari and the guru of the Gautya Sampradaya. <laughs> These are heavy words. The beautiful and sweet service of Sri Rata is also most dear to us. Of all kinds of servanthood, the servitude of Sri Rata is the greatest. Why? Why? Because Bhavala Sarati means it is the highest servanthood, the greatest servanthood, because the Manjaris feel exactly the same like, like Radhika. No other Jiva in any rasa has the possibility to a, a, a experience Madanakya Mahabhav. Simple as that. Only the manjaris can come close to experience this beautiful love and therefore Baba is saying, this servanthood is the greatest. <laughs> Although you are a Saki, you are also a maidservant, adolescent in form, and attributes and qualified for the most intimate services. There is no other kind of servitude that can soothe the hearts of the Gaudiya Vaishnava. So sometimes people misunderstand, of course the manjaris are also sakis, but not all sakis are manjaris. That is the, the thing to learn. All manjaris are sakis, 100%. But not all Sakis are Manjaris. Lalita and Vishaka and Ananga Manjaris, they are not Manjaris. But Radhi Manjari, Rupa Manjari and all the Manjaris, they are Manjaris. There is no other kind of servitude that can soothe the hearts of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. You can see Baba is so much in his Daibhav, it is not is not deviating one single inch from, from that. The Manjaris are actually taking part in the Madhura Rasa, but still it is servitude, meaning they don't experience that what the Saki experience, for their service is within the scope of the Madhura Rasa. So Baba here wants to say, 
They are in Madura Rasa, but they don't enjoy the company of Krishna. They only enjoy when Radha and Krishna are together. So this is a very big, very big difference because of servitude. Radha and Dasya. Rupa Raghunata Pade Hoipe Akute Kope Ham Hujapo Se Yukala Piriti. When we lie by following in the footsteps of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunata Swami, understand the love of Radha and Krishna. Naratam Das Thakur. Rupa and Raghunata Das bodies are made from tip to toe of Yugala Ujwala Rasa, splendid consciousness of the divine couple. How eager their hearts were. How can one become absorbed in this splendid consciousness without being full of this Ujwala Yukala Uchwala Rasa. Very interesting. How can one absorb in this splendid consciousness without being full of this Yukala Uchwala Rasa? And now Baba is giving us a very nice clue and help. Meditation on the Kam Gayatri is very helpful for entering into this mood. Why? <laughs> because Gurudev, he got the mantra, Kam Gayatri, Gopal Mantra, he got those mantras, especially the Kam Gayatri, he got that mantra from his Gurudev. So, and it is said that actually the mantra is not different from the one who is referred to. So the Kam Gayatri here, Baba is saying, Kam Gayatri gives us entrance into this mood. Which mood? Yukala Uchwala Rasa. Which mood? Manjari Bhav. So Gurudev is placing all his love, all he got in his heart, all his love in Stai Bhav, Manjari Bhav. He is giving the disciple in their hearts via medium of the mantras we receive, especially the mantra Kam Gayatri. Kling Kama Devaya Vitmahe, you know this, Pushpabanaya, the one who shoots with five arrows. And it is said that in the Gopal mantra, Kling Krishnaya Govindaya, and in the Kam Gayatri, all your relationship is there. And by repeating the Picha Mantra is the, is the one who is letting it flow and bloom. So by doing therefore, I made myself the job whenever I have, I, I, I made myself the prom my promise. I try to keep it never ever to skip in the Diksha Mantras. I really highly recommend to every one of you, if you receive the Diksha Mantras, even if you are in a very precarious situation, Try to chant them every day. And Baba told me if there is not possible to do with the, we have malas, you know, chant them on the fingers. But never, never leave them out because it means to skip out. The Diksha mantras are the pipelines going through your heart. And if one day you miss that, it's very difficult. It will be very difficult. You will see. So this is a, I have not realized many things, but this one I realized, try to always be fixed in chanting your Diksha Mantras every day, if possible without fail. Even Baba said to me, if you cannot chant it on the mala, bus, hospital, driving, whatever situation there may be, some emergency, whatever, try to chant them on the fingers, but chant them every day. Baba is making this point here very clearly. This. Kam Gayatri especially is giving us entrance into this mood because all our aspects, our Ekadash Bhav, our Sita Deya is buried, is hidden, is in that mantra and it comes to fructification by 
you can sit down and you ask yourself why I am repeating the Kam Gayatri Mantra 10 times or 108 times if you chant them on the mala. It's always the same mantra. What is going on? This is boring. But actually, this means you, f you fortify the pipeline. You make a very strong pipeline that this bhav can flow into your heart. This is what we do with the Gayatris. We build this pipeline and we make it strong and strong and strong every day. And the more we do this, the more we are connected to the Ishtadev of that mantra. And we pray to Krishna. Kam Gayatri and Gopal Mantra is Krishna Mantra, I know, but it's actually Radhika's Mantra because we pray for the service of the Lotus Vita Swamini. So these Diksha Mantras are so powerful, especially if you receive them in a proper functioning Sampradaya, unbroken up towards the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu, which we are in a very fortunate position to have. <clears throat> so Baba is saying, Prindavana aprakrita navinamadana kamabicha kam gayatri yara upasana. The transcendental Chitanya Chaitamrita Matya 8, the transcendental youthful Cupid of Prindavan, Krishna, is meditated upon and attained by the Kam Gayatri Mantra, which has the Kama Beach, the seed of transcendental desire, joined to it. He who makes the devotees forget the material world and who maddens them with his transcendental form, qualities, and pastimes is the transcendental youthful Cupid, and on him we meditate, Dimahi. So here Baba is saying that we attain Krishna, but we don't want to attain Krishna, we want to attain Swamini. So here we have to understand that this, um, when he, Baba is saying, um, let me check again, is, uh, is meditated upon and attained. So this transcendental youthful Cupid, we attain that, but he is not the transcendental Cupid without Radhika. Without Swamini, he is not the all-attractive transcendental Cupid. So we attain him only in the company of Swamini. That is our way. That is our Staipa. We only want to be with Krishna when Radhika is there. Otherwise, no. But that means the attainment of Krishna means for us, that we can be with Krishna, but never without Swamini, always as a shadow of Swamini. Gayantam trayati yasmat iti gayatri, that which liberates by being sung is a gayatri. The worship with the Kam Gayatri mantra is meant to save us from material existence and to make our bodies, minds, and life heirs fit for relishing the flavors of Radha Govinda's transcendental pastimes. So how is this going to be? And to make our bodies, minds, and life heirs fit. It's very easy. The Kam Gayatri and all Gayatri mantras help us to realize our Siddhadeha. That is what is meant here. To make our bodies fit for relishing the flavors of the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, we need the perfect vehicle. We need a spiritual body. So, and like Narayan Maharaj said, this, the, the, the process of Diksha is not finished until you realize your Swarup. So Siddha Pranali, the revelation of the Siddha Deha, is included in the full process of Diksha. Otherwise, this sentence makes no sense. Chanting the Kam Gayatri Mantra makes our body, mind, and life airs fit. Our body cannot be made like that. This is a material body. So here Baba means the Siddha Deha. Meditating, when you chant your Kam Gayatri and your Krishna Mantra and Radha Mantra, you always should sit down and think that you are the Mantra. Best with your name. 
In this, in his spiritual absorption, Raghunada submits to Swamini's feet. <laughs> Let me meditate. How you overwhelm Sham with your ecstatic place in the Kunja. This is the favorite part of the mantra. Is they want that Radhika wins. But even you are unable to bring him back to consciousness. You will need me. Gurvit Gurdjieff is always saying, wow, Radhika needs the mandaris. You have a very important part to play. Very important. During his loving pastimes in the Kuncha, Sham faints of ecstasy because of encountering the waves of Radhika's vast Madana Mahabhav. So only she can achieve that result, that Krishna, he faints. That is the Madanakya Mahabhav. Only Swamini is, in, is, is able to do that. But Anuragava, the passionate Radhika, is not satisfied yet. So here, some excellent service is required. Swamini thinks, Tulsi, I cannot break. Priyatama swoon. So he, I cannot wake him up. Why don't you please come? Where else is such confidential service to be found? No Saki can be called right now. There is no telephone number now for the Sakis. It's not possible. The Sakis cannot be called now. <laughs> no way. It will be so embarrassing. She can only call the Manjaris. Hmm. Where else is such confidential service to be found? Now Baba is saying, even Lalita and Vishaka cannot attain this. This is the most excellent service. Radhika is called Devi in this verse because she takes part in such playful sports. Another explanation for the word Devi. Interesting. If anyone wants to ask something and share something, please, please interrupt, okay? Say something. Once the divine couple plays a game of dice for wager, Würfelspiel, she who gives the most joy wins. Sham is defeated. On Ratarani's indication, the maidservant begins to deride Sham. To deride means to rid ridicule him, saying, Oh, hey, don't come here to play dice anymore. Better you go and hurt the cows. Understand? For cow herding, you need the cow's brain. <laughs> so you can imagine the great sages of yore and the great riches of yore, they all spoke eloquent and elaborate prayers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And also the Vedas personified offered multiple, multiple prayers. And here the Manjaris say to Krishna, come on, more or less, she's, they're saying you have a brain of a cow. <laughs> that is what she's saying. You know, for he, She's saying like, um, let me see. For cow herding, you need a cow's brain. You must have become like them because of too much association with them, with the cows. Qualifications are dispensable. Go and play there where bodily strength is required. For this game, you need some brain. You understand? Don't come here to play this game anymore. So who can, who can talk to Krishna like that? Impossible. This is really very frank and very, yeah. Sham is embarrassed by these joking words. And we can imagine there is no limit to Swamini's ecstasy. She is laughing because she knows Krishna enjoys this very much, this very heavy joking words. He loves it. Sham is embarrassed. There is no limit to Swamini's ecstasy. This is the most excellent service. 
What a sweet subject of meditation. How can servitude ever be supreme when it is anointed with the ras with Matura Rasa? Without being in Matura Bhav, a sweet spiritual mood, one cannot <coughs> enter into Rata and Krishna's pastimes, picking up where Uddhava has said this. Without this bhav, without the Yes. Papa? Yes, please. I like I like to share my, my please. now. Oh my dear. Thank you very please. much for your your wonderful explanations. And I always have um you gave me always interesting um tips how I can improve my bhajan. And now when you are talking, my dear, I thought yes, when the Banjaris are talking like this to Krishna. This is a sign that there must be so deep trust, so closeness, um, deep, deep love when you, when you are, when you talk to someone. The, the trust that he knows it's a game, the trust that his love will increase knowing this and the trust and the knowing that Swamini will enjoy this. Wow, that means so much closeness and so much love between all them, all together to do like this. Mm. It's so wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. Radhe, Radhe. This is Baba. Baba's mercy is flowing. Radhe, Radhe. Everyone can feel. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Very nice point. Very nice point. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Radhe, Radhe. The love is flowing in such a way. <laughs> now Baba is making this point. Only those who know the feelings and the thoughts of Bhava Maya, Krishna and Bhava Mai, all emotional Radhika, can enter into this. So here we have to say goodbye to intelligence and mind and focus on the heart. Otherwise, we cannot enter that. It is, a, it is, it is actually a sadhana of emotions, but we have to transform our egoistic and uh, enjoying emotions to the emotions of the divine couple. Like here, our Rasheshwari said, there has to be so much <clears throat> deep connection between all those participants of that Leela that such a flow can start. If Lalita and Vishaka would be there, or, or Mother Yashoda, or whatever, it is not possible in such a setting that love can flow <clears throat> so unrestrictedly. It's not possible. So Baba is explaining why only those who know the feelings and the thoughts of Grada and Krishna can enter into this. The maidservant don't want Krishna alone. Not even in their dreams. Now this Baba is coming to the importance and the more or less definitions what why Manjari Bhav is so important. They pray to Krishna. Please take me along wherever your place, wherever you play your loving pastimes with your Priyachi, so that I can engage in your loving service. Srimad Rupa Goswami Pad is saying, the Kama Rupa Raga Bhakti, Raga Nuga devotion, in the erotic amorous mood, is of two kinds. Sambhog e Chatmika, devotion, full of desire to enjoy with Krishna personally. Example, Lalita Vishaka. And Tat, Pave Chatmika. Those who are not eager to personally enjoy with Krishna. Tad Bhave Chatmika Tasam Bhava Madhurya Kamita. These devotees are finding more happiness. Those who are Tad Bhave Chatmika, those who love not to enjoy personally with Krishna, 
These devotees, Rupa Goswami is saying in his nectar of devotion, these devotees are finding more happiness in assisting Krishna's direct lady lovers like Radha and Chandravali. He mentions Chandravali, but it's not for us. Like Radha and Chandravali in meeting Krishna than in meeting him personally. Examples are Sakis like Lalita and Vishaka. Their stai bath in sync permanent mood is Krishna Rati, love for Krishna. More. Those are the more for Krishna. And there's Suridrata Rati, love for the friend. Like Radhika, that is a Sanjari bath, a feeling which roams within the stai bath in the main feeling. So the stai bath of Lalita and Vishaka is more love for Krishna. And within that, Love. Sometimes they also love Radhika, but their main bhav is Vishamsnya, more love for Krishna. They love Krishna first, and that love is infused in Radhika. During Purva Raga, Sri Radha met Lalita and the Sakis on the bank of the Kali Radha because they had the same mood. They became acquainted with each other that day. But when the gopis saw the superiority of Sri Radha's love for Krishna, they wanted to become happy by arranging for her meeting with Krishna. Krishna then told his friend Subha, How many hundreds of Braja gopis didn't I see under the shade of the Kadamba tree on the bank? of the Jamuna on the day I subdued the Kaliya snake. I tell you, old friend Supal, I was so startled that I didn't know whether it was day or night. Amongst them, there were about two or four Jew-like girls. And then among them, there was again one particularly mind-enjointing girl, enchanting girl. She entered my mind, and the resultant smoke of Cupid did not allow me to sleep anymore. I am now constantly meditating on her. Who knows how the pain of separation feels? My body becomes skinnier and weaker every day. Govinda Das, from whom that poem is, such are the ways of new young love. Srimati showed similar loving attachment when she first saw Shamsundar. When I saw this crown jewel of lovers, I did not know anymore whether it was day or night. Who can I tell about my heartache? Oh, Saki, what more do you want to know? I told you what's on my heart. When he will meet with me, then I will feel fulfilled. And if not, then I cannot live anymore. This is definite. The Sakis like Lalita and Vishaka are getting more ecstasy from establishing the meeting of the Anuragi eager couple Radha and Madhava than from meeting with Krishna themselves. Chandi Chandrawali, for example, is again different. She gets more pleasure from meeting Krishna alone than from meeting with Krishna themselves. And in this way, their love has become known as Tat Pave Jatmika love. Still, Sri Radha sometimes desires to give them the position of Naika. So that is the difference. That is the difference between Lalita and Vishaka. They are also Tat Bhavi Chatmika. That was my mistake before. They are not the example of Samboga. Samboga would mean someone who is enjoying with Krishna directly, like Chandrawali. But Lalita and Vishaka, they are also Tat Bhavi Chatmika. But Radhika sometimes wants them to be the lady love. That means that she sends them sometimes to enjoy with Krishna. 
Hmm? Still, Sri Radha sometimes desires to give them the position of Naika, Lady Love of Krishna. But although the Manchari are also a kind of Saki, they never accept such a role. So this is the big difference. Even in this category of Tat, Pavichatmika, those who love Krishna more, uh, those who love Radha and Krishna more, and whose sole existence is to bring the divine couple together, Ladita and Vishaka, both, and the Manjaris, both aim to bring Radha and Krishna together. But sometimes Swamini tells Lalita and Vishaka to enjoy with Krishna personally. Imagine that. Imagine that limit of love. She, she's not feeling any jealousy. Here in this material world, you would go crazy, no? But in the spiritual world, whatever makes Krishna happy, Radhika is arranging for that. Just imagine this in the material world. The woman is arranging for that too for her husband. Everyone would go spellbound crazy. So this is the huge difference of pure love and material love. So we have glimpses here also, but the true spiritual love is that, that sometimes Lalita and Vishaka, they can become Naikas, meaning they can enjoy with, with Krishna themselves. Mm -hmm. Now Baba is giving the nice uh, uh, um, definition. Still, Sri Radha sometimes desires to give them the position of Naika, Lady Love of Krishna, but although the Manjaris are also a kind of Saki, they never accept such a role. The Manjari buds, like, enhance the beauty of a flower, Gopi, but are never separately enjoyable to the black bee, Krishna. So Krishna always wants to enjoy the flower, not the buds. The buds only make the flower more beautiful. <laughs> Lalita and the Sakis have samsneha, equal love for Radha and Krishna. But the Manjaris are Radha Snehadika. They have more love for Sri Radhika. So before we heard that um, they have, as there's Daibhav, love for Krishna, and the Sanjari Bhav, which is coming and going, is also love for Swamini. But now comes the opposite. Within Madhurya Ras, there can also be an example where actually the opposite is the case. So now Baba is explaining Bhavalasa. Lalita and the Sakis have some sneha, equal love for Radha and Krishna. But the Manjaris are Radha Snehadika. They have more love for Radhika. This kind of love is called Bhavalasa. Srila Rupa Goswami states in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 2.5.128 When the Sakis love Radha, as much as or less than Krishna, then their Sanjari bath is called Krishna Rati. But if they love Ratika more, then it is called Bhavolasa Rati. Again, when the Sakis love Ratha as much or less than Krishna, so that means Samsneha and Vishamsneha, then their Sanjari Bhav is called Ra Krishna Rati. But if they love Radhika more, Radhik Snehadika, then it is called Bhavolasa Rati. The Manjaris are endowed with this Bhavolasa Rati to love Swamini more. Then Krishna, and actually this is also their staibhav. This is their permanent mood. Shilarama Thakka inquired from Shimadi Thakurani about this Pavalasa Rati. Ramai Thakur said, 
disciple of uh, our Chanava Thakurani. Please tell me more about Bhavala Sarati. Mother Chanava said, Listen carefully, O son. Bhavala Sarati can only be found in Brindavan. Brindavan, where Kishora eternally sports with Kishori. Hmm? Brindavan, where Kishore eternally sports with Kishori, cannot be perceived even by the Devas. Sri Rupa Manjari and Sri Rati Manjari are absorbed in the ecstasy of devotional service day and night. They are all endowed with Bhavala Sarati, and they are only happy <clears throat> when the divine couple is happy. They, know, they don't know anything else but that. They are completely equal to Srimati, only their bodies are different. They are one soul and one life heir, and they are all controlled by Ratha. So this we have to read often, and then we understand this closeness, why the love bites of Swamini's lips can appear on the lips of Rupa Manjari because of this. Because of this Bhava Lazarati, they are completely equal to Srimati, only their bodies are different, because she is, they are expansions of Swamini. They are one soul, one life heir, and they are all controlled. By Ratha. One who wants to relish Krishna's sweetness to the utmost must take complete shelter of Sri Ratha. Why? Can someone explain why? It's a very beautiful point. Why is Baba saying this? One who wants to relish Krishna's sweetness to the utmost must take complete shelter. Of Sri Ratha. Please, someone join in. Arun, you know so well, but you want to hear from somebody else. I know no well. I just want to not speak alone all day. Maybe someone <laughs> can someone can join. So I guess maybe it? correct me. But oh, I guess you know. because Radharani he can serve Krishna to the utmost. Nobody can take that position from Srimati. This is already taken. And if you want to feel her feelings to the utmost, you have to become a kinkari of her. Yes. Because then she will share these feelings from the deepest chambers of her heart with you. And this is happening only, like Gurudev is always mentioning, the manjaris are the babies of Srimati Radhika. That's why they can be in the most intimate place. If a, if a couple will do their most intimate things. They will never be shy in front of their child, who is so innocent, doesn't know anything. When it grows up, something can change, but as long as a baby, so the manjaris are like the babies. She not feels shy. She can share everything, and they are most, most, most similar to her, like Tarun just said. They are one soul. They are part of her being, of her existence. Each manjari has a different quality of Srimati, especially. So they, they can feel it to the utmost, I guess. Karun, please. Yeah, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful explanation. Thank you. Wonderful. Very beautiful. Also, you can add that to relish Krishna's sweetness. When is Krishna's sweetness at the utmost? 
when he is together with Swamini. That's all. So both are extremely important. What you said is better and higher. And then also that when they when you want the mantras they want, don't you probably explain now. They don't want to relish Krishna's sweetness alone. But factually, Krishna's sweetness shines at the utmost when he's together with Radhika. Gurudev always saying like that. When he's not together with Radhika, he's not as beautiful as when he is together with Swamini. Chibat Prabhupada Saraswati writes in Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, Where is Radha, who is hard to perceive by following the Vedas? And where is Krishna, who always lives in between her butt-like breasts? Sri Radha Rani says, If you want to see my Sundara, you must take full shelter of my lotus feet. And why do the mandaris love Krishna? Because he is Radhika's gallant. <laughs> they don't love him on his own merit. They love him because he is the lover of Swamini. Remember Krishna in this forest as the prana valaba of my Swamini. First Radha, then Shyam. When Krishna makes any trouble, we'll take him by the hand and throw him out of the kuncha. We are the maidservants of Radha. Why do the Kingaris love Krishna? Because he is the lover of Radharani. Once when Krishna takes his supper in Nandishwara, a Kingari fans him. Without being seen by others, Sham keeps his hand on that Kingari's foot as a means of asking her, Will I meet my dearest one or not? That maidservant then places one toe on Shyama's hand, indicating that the meeting will be possible. Imagine this. this is a nice point to meditate upon. Baba is always giving these things. So one toe is telling Krishna, yes. Hmm? That is the most excellent service. This is Varadasya. Nothing is done for personal happiness. Everything is done for the pleasure of the Yugala. Although the mantras are in the category of Sakis, they are servants because of their complete dedication to devotional service. The Sakis may have a superior position in the past times because they are friends, you know, but the fortune of service is greater for the Manjaris. They know Sri Radhika's innermost purpose, and therefore they can perform the service without hesitation, like no one else in the world. This is because what Baba said in the beginning, they are one soul and one life heir. Therefore, no one else can do it like that. One day Radha and Krishna are intimately enjoying themselves in a kunja. And the manjari relishes the sweetness of these pastimes through a passage between the vines. It appears to the maidservant that there is some obstacle in Rata and Krishna's pastimes, but they don't notice anything out of ecstasy. The maidservant then notices that Rata and Krishna got stuck to each other with their hair. So very carefully, she enters the kuncha so as not to disturb them. We can all now close our eyes and imagine this, how she goes in tiptoeing like that, you know. So very carefully, she enters the kuncha so as not to disturb them. Only the mantras can do this, no one else. And unravels the hairs so that the amorous pastimes can continue again. Who else can perform such a clever and intimate service? Even Lalita and the other Sakis don't know. This is Vara Dasya, the most excellent service which is attained by chanting the name of Sri Ratha. Jaya Jaya Ratha Nama Bindavana Yara Dama Krishna Sukha Vila Sera Nidhi. Narodam Das Thuk Thakur Bema Bhakti Chandrita. Glory, glory to Sri Radha's name that dwells in Vrindavan, 
And that is the jewel of Krishna's blissful pastimes. O Radhe, for attaining your most excellent service, I am taking shelter of your lotus feet, which even Shyam holds to his chest for soothing his love-afflicted heart. O Queen of Brindaman, I take shelter of your cooling lotus feet. Now here we are taught again by Saraswati Thakur part that we should develop Radha Nishta before entering Vila Bhakusumanjali. All these verses are from Radha Rasa Sudhanidi. O Radha, O Queen of Brindaman, I take shelter of your cooling lotus feet, which are filled with all the nectar honey of pure love. And that even Madhupati, the sweet Lord, the Lord of sweetness, Sri Krishna, keeps to his heart to soothe his terrible, lovey, loving affliction. Sri Radhika protects Sri Krishna's senses. That's why she is a gopa, gopi. The verbal root gop means protecting. So Sanskrit, again, so many layers of meanings. So she truly is the highest gopi. She, Radhika, protects Sri Krishna's senses. And how she does it, we all know. Gilthari does not feel the slightest distress while lifting Govardhan Hill. Why? His pleasure potency stands before him and solves everything. <laughs> this is Rasa, Rasa Tattva Pai Excellence. You know, you can study the paintings of that picture where Krishna holds the whole thing on his mouth. And, oh my God, how strong is Krishna? How wonderful is the supreme personality of God? That he is the strongest and the mightiest. But Baba is saying, no, my dear, no. He can only hold up that mountain because Ladini Shakti is nearby him. How beautiful. This is Rasa, uh, this art, um, artist of perspective, you know, the art of perspective. Nothing is wrong and nothing is better. Just different and different also in the experience. Those who experience the mighty power of Krishna are happy. For sure they are happy. But those who experience that he actually is only as strong as that because leisure, leisure potency, Radhika is nearby, are also happy. And Mahaprabhu confirms utmost happy. So this is Wonderful. These little things, you know, you have to always remember, underline or um, remember, remember. I read this verse now maybe, I don't know how many times, but still, this is uh, like Gurudev is saying, it all comes up again and again, like new. <laughs> Sorry, again, I was too fast. I can, uh, <laughs> I can repeat a little slower. So you see that when 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 you see the painting <laughs> when you see the painting i i start again when you see the painting of radha and krishna uh, when you see the painting krishna holding up the govardhan hill on his little finger so subjectively you can feel wow he is the strongest he is full of power the mightiest you know wow such a strong strong man but this is rasa. This is the perspective of rasa. The manjaris and the sadhanas, sadhakas who follow manjari bhav, they see it like Baba sees it. Krishna can only lift this huge mountain for seven days because his pleasure potency, pleasure giving potency, Ladini Shakti Radhika is nearby. And he and she can stare each other, unhinged, unhindered. <laughs> His pleasure potency stands before him and solves everything. It's funny. She's made of the quintessence of the Chintamani jewel of Mahabharata, the pinnacle of love. In sandalwood pulp or a Chintamani stone, there is no asara or useless refuse, but still her marabhav is the sara or quintessence of the Chintamani jewel of Prema. The maidservants say, Shyam, 
Do you know why you are so beautiful? Because your Priya is there. <laughs> Directly. Then Govinda Lilamrita 8.32. When he shines with Radha, he is Madana Mohan, the enchanter of Cupid. But otherwise, he is himself enchanted by Cupid, although he enchants the whole world. So this is again this uh, reference to that you can only experience Krishna's, you can only relish the highest aspect of Krishna's sweetness when he is together with Radha. Mounting the chariots of the gopis' desires, he stirs even Cupid's mind. Hence he is called Madana Mohan. And how can he enchant the Cupid? Because Swamini is with him. The Supreme Brahman delights my mind when it is bound by the vine-like arms of the cowherd girls. Krishna is very happy when someone calls him Ratha Sevak, the servant of Ratha. But almost nobody says this. And Rasheshwari just told us why it is like that. Because not everyone feels the same like Radhika feels and like Krishna feels. So nobody else can say this and nobody can understand this, that he is very happy to be called a servant of Radharani because everyone is a servant of Krishna. So how can you say that he is a servant of Swamini? Again, this is a perspective of Rasa. Those who love Krish Radhika more are happy, happily saying that Krishna is the Sevak of Swamini, but actually she is the greatest Seva, Seva uh, Kingari, you know, she's the greatest server. <coughs> hmm? But almost nobody says this. Krishna is so much under Radha's control that he is willing to give everything to those who serve her. Again, benediction, very beautifully here, snick, sn snuggled in. Sri Krishna is so much under control that he is willing to give everything to those who serve her. He is so happy. He says in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita that actually those who say that they are my devotees are actually not really my devotees, but those who say that those, they are the devotees of my devotees, they are the true devotees. So the mantras are the best devotees because they are the devotees of his most beloved. So Bhagavad Gita in action, very wonderful. Very beautiful. Srila Prabhupada Saraswati writes in 155 of Radharasa Sudhanidi, O Shirati, Madhupati, Krishna cancels innumerable offenses of anyone who even once relishes the nectarian spiritual flavor of your name. And in great ecstasy, he considers what is the greatest gift he can give to such a person? Who can then imagine the glories of someone whose mind is fixed on becoming your maidservant? Wow. Beautiful. He is so happy, like I said now, like in the Bhagavad Gita, to become the devotee of my devotee makes Krishna the most happiest. So he becomes utmost happy when we say we are kingaries of Swami. That is actually giving Krishna the most pleasure. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami says, I don't want anything else but your excellent service. If I am not qualified for your service, then please at least Make me attached to this aspiration so that one day I, might, I may get it. So this is also a nice, nice mantra for our daily life, for our daily uh, uh, aspiration. He really plays his, his really nice, his humility comes now forward, his true spiritual humility. He says, if I am not qualified for your service, who is more qualified than him? Then please, at least make me attached to this 
aspiration so that one day I might get it. Here he is speaking directly to all of us, directly into our hearts. We all know, I know perfectly I'm not qualified, but I take this opportunity from Raghunath Das Goswami part. I know I'm not qualified, but still I hanker after this aspiration that one day I might get it. And this is powerful enough. Never we should underestimate this longing. Das yaya te mama rasostu rasostu satya. Let me truly have eager spiritual thirst for your service. And now there comes this beautiful Baba always puts this Rasika Chandra da sings uh, summarization of the verse. Tomara charana patma prema bhakti rasa satma dhasi bhava seva vinatara jivane marane haya mone mora nahi chaya sakhitvadi anya kichuara Your lotus feet are the abode of loving devotion in life or in death. I don't want anything else but a service mood towards them. I don't want friendship with you or anything else. I don't know the qualities of friendship, therefore, O Devi, I offer my obeisance to it again and again. And if you say you don't want my friendship just because you are shy, but you actually desire it with your mind, then listen. O Devi, to my petition, this desire has never arisen in my heart. My mind is always filled with dasya rasa. That you should know for sure. So this is a beautiful summarization and what is it called? Enhancement of the beautiful verse in itself. So no need to repeat it again. So here again is also what just came to my mind, Charana Padma. This is a very oftentimes used uh, a phrase, Shri Guru Charana Padma, Tomara Charana Padma. Always the lotus feet are the abode of loving devotion. So here the devotees is singing to Radhika that her lotus feet are the abode of loving devotion. And again, this is, is, is a sign that the bhakti is a descending process. You know, it's not an ascending process where we go with our mind and think, yes, knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. No, to, to put the head under someone else's feet, it needs humility. Otherwise, this cannot flow. The downward process, the descending process of bhakti rasa, it cannot flow. Mm. So material knowledge is usually an ascending process, an induction, you know, not towards up, up, up. But actually spiritual knowledge is coming down. It's flowing downwards from the lotus feet of Swamini. And of course, on its way, it passes the lotus feet of Gurudev. So to say, metaphorically. So therefore, at the end, I always conclude, we should always try to place our head beneath the lotus feet of our Gurudev, who is a perfect, perfect, perfect representative of a kingery, of a Rata kingery, Sadhu Maharaj. My Gurudev and Narayan Marsh. So you should be very happy and always place your head beneath their lotus feet. Be sure that, that they are connected to those lotus feet here. <coughs> Radhe, Radhe, I just want to share that there is this nice metaphor of the tree that is growing upside down, that the roots are in the spiritual world and yes. the fruit come through Gurudev's lotus feet down to us. Thank you. Yeah, Shri Guru Charane Rati Eisei Uttama Bhakti. 
So beautiful. Knowing full well <clears throat> that he will bring us to this, what Baba said to this confidential Nikunja pastimes, only Gurudev can navigate us to that place. <clears throat> Thank you so much. If anyone has a question, enhancement, comment, please share. Everyone is welcome to say something. Ask a question if there is a possibility. I just want to say thank you so much for sharing with so much power. And even if you sometimes speak very fast, it is only so relishable because we can feel how deeply touched you are from this topic. So it's very nice to listen to you. And um, I very much appreciate your sharing. Thank you. Thank you. It's Baba's Kripa. <laughs> Wonderful class, Baba. Thank you. I would have had that you, more people should share, but it was nice. Thank you. Could, there's a question for you, Kishori. I just saw Kishori. Can you please again share the root and the fruit, this example you gave? The tree upside maybe, down. Maybe you can do it better, Tanamata. I'm not really. Try, you try. Please do. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, not so. Please. I'm not so learned, so I cannot quote a specific Shastra. I just uh, heard from Gurudev and from devotees, beautiful, inspiring Vaishnavas like you here that um, <coughs> this um, metaphor of prema kalpataru, like the, this is the meaning of the um, wish-fulfilling tree, uh, who is for us our Gurudev. So uh, Gurudev's lotus feet, when we touch them, can give us the uh, this is the only thing, <laughs> the only way for us to get any drop of this soft fruit juice. <laughs> so if we see, uh, but I don't know, there is for sure a Sanskrit um, uh, shloka for this, or like a, maybe Tarun, you know better, but I just, I just know this, this metaphor. It's that all the, that, that's all that's needed. You, and you explained yeah. it perfectly. It's all it's, we don't need now, you know, Sanskrit verse. I, I honestly have to say, I also don't need a Sanskrit example. But what you said is perfect. The, the tree in the material world has its roots in the ground and it grows up. But that what you are describing has its roots in the spiritual world. Yeah. And it's upside it down, down and the fruits and the fruits are hanging down so if we this is actually the, the the meaning it's coming from up towards us down and we have to get the fruits of that tree by the mercy of guru we can get these fruits so yeah. i'm not i don't know where i don't know even know where the i think in the bhagavatam maybe is this example i forgot it i heard it many times but i forgot the exact placement of yeah. this description but we had we nailed the essence Mm -hmm. Yeah, so because you also said <laughs> that the spiritual knowledge comes from up to down. So I got this, I remember this metaphor of the tree that is upside yeah. down because our world is like a, like a reflection, yes, reflection of the spiritual world. So here everything yes. is different upside down, yes. so to say. Yeah. Also, you can see that this is actually this. Uh, is the greatest obstacle for the learned persons. You know, when you meet learned persons, um, they always think you have to explore the universe according to our capacities of the human mind and brain. So this is what the scientists are doing in the name of science, which is actually not science. Prabhupada was very heavy with the scientists because they only try to go from from their measurements of their limit the frog in the well you know the frog thinks oh my well is the big big universe that there's nothing outside my well 
So you cannot, you can never gather knowledge with this, you know. So you have to. That is the. Therefore, you see that not many people are joining a really deep, intimate spiritual movement. Those people are staying in movements where, you know, where the deep, the deepness is not going so far, and and that they can stay on the surface because at one point. When Bhaktivinoda Thakur and when the Acharyas are talking about Sharanagati, you have to give up this tendency to understand and to measure everything with the human mind, because you will always lose. You are if you if you cannot accept that knowledge is coming from down, it's coming down to you from someone who received that knowledge. So they they cannot develop this nishta. And for developing this nishta, it needs humility, because without this humility, you, you you say you can tell me whatever you want. How how can I know that you saw it? You know. So and uh, what are the signs of a true guru? So Chiba Goswami is giving us the example of someone who is a true guru, and then we can see, and we can check, and then at our our effort must be then to accept. And to have faith in this in this deductive process coming down through parampara, it has no use to go up. You know, some things you can you can do with induction. Yes, of course, of course, little little scientific problems you can solve with the material mind, but mainly spiritual spiritual philosophy and spiritual knowledge, and ultimately quantum physics and all these things they can never solve. With material, with the material mind, without being able to accept the deductive process. Rade, Rade, um, this just made me think of something. There's a really nice text by uh, Paul Ricoeur, who is a uh, um, both in philosophy and theology, and he makes this distinction that between knowledge and revelation. So knowledge is mm. sovereign subject that takes and claims. But revelation is the opposite. It's like um, is given, not taken. Very beautiful. And you can only and it's given and it's only what is secret can be revealed. Um, and you can only get it by surrender. Very nice, very beautiful, Nina. Thank you. Very good. That is what spiritual life is all about. Revelation. Yes. That not 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 uh, in vain. Jesus. There are the revelations in the Bible, you know. Revelation is very important. Diksha process is a revelation. Sita Pranali is a revelation. Everything is a revelation. It is all revealed. <laughs> yes. Yes. Nothing. are the Tandava to all of you. Thank you. I apologize for speaking too fast. Speaking too much. <laughs> Jai Gurudev, Jai Baba, Jai Vaishnava, Vrinda, DJ. Can I say, don't apologize for doing good things, Tarun Baba? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I learn, I learn.